All right, so I'm with uh, Charlie Farrell. Charlie is uh, ex-military. So, Charlie, what, what regiments were you in? I was in the Rangers, um, uh, which is, um, in my opinion, one of the best regiments in the British Army. Really hard-working, soldiering guys, uh, putting themselves in harm's way. And what, what, um, what sort of... Uh, if you can talk about it, I don't know if you can, like, so I don't want to get into trouble. What, what sort of combat zones have you been in, or what can you talk about? So, so the Rangers have been in all combat zones right the way through, um, right the way through from Northern Ireland, uh, right the way through to all, all, the, all the recent activities across the globe, um, including Sierra Leone and, and places, places of that ilk. Um, uh, I, I think a couple of years ago, one of the top the top soldier in uh, Britain was uh, a Royal Irish Ranger and Colonel Tim Collins. Yeah, he, um, he gave a fantastic. He uh, did, uh, uh, and it speaks to yeah, the uh, combat. And, and he was uh, my boss. Um, he was uh, it came came to the second bat uh, as a captain, and he was my boss for a while, and he was a fantastic. Uh, leader of men and uh, you know expected the best from his men uh, and he got it he got he got it he's a, he a top top notch guy and getting britain's top soldier basically um, but he was a really nice guy as well with it humble and dedicated um, as you as you have to be in the military really. Charlie, what, what I wanted to ask you about, I know we've had a discussion about this over the phone, and, and, and people often talk about having the right mindset in, in, in different situations. And you've talked about being at the combat zone, uh, so you've got to have a, a mindset for that. I've, I've stepped into the ring on 34 occasions, and you've got to have a mindset for that. But one of the things that, that, that struck me on that is um, when you told me you did this, um, I can't remember the phrase that you used, but you did this camping right in the middle of nowhere. But it wasn't in the tent, all you had was a sleeping bag. Yeah, a baby and, bag, and, yeah. And, and, and your dog's around it, and you're in the middle of nowhere, nothing around. And I just wondered, you know, uh, it's bad enough being in the house by yourself and sometimes you hear a funny noise and you think, what's that? And there you are in the middle of the woods or wherever you were in this massive big field, no tent. And, and, and you, you just uh, you're in this sleeping bag. So I, I want to try and understand the mindset behind that. You know, how do you get through that and, and prepare for it? Well, do you know what, John? It, 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 it's funny, isn't it? It's like we're all under stresses and strains throughout our right way through our adult lives. You know, through certain what certain environments we've been in or thrown in at, at times. Whether you've been in the military or not, um, but one of the happiest times I've ever had was going back to my childhood. Was camping and being out amongst the uh, the wild, if you like. And even as a child, um, I grew up on a council estate, and we used to do some crazy, crazy things just across the road from us. There was a massive field with bulls in, and. I remember the farmer telling us one time that all these bulls were getting fattened up to, to go for meat or bullocks, whatever you were. Good for me. Yeah. <laughs> so what we what we used to do is we used to chase these bulls up and down the field so they didn't get fat so you wouldn't get killed. <laughs> so in our little minds, we were be I mean, in truth, we were being nuisances. And we used to ride the bloody things. We chased them all into the corner, and a couple had hold them there. And we climb up on the fence, and got on them, and go, go off like the high chaparral. Where was this? So this was. Uh, I grew up on the Ford Estate uh, right. in Upton, right? Um, quite a notorious estate. Um, and my love for the outdoors and camping and stuff like. Because in them days, as as like a ten year old kid, we'd just go over, go over the field across the road. And, about 20 of us and all set up a little camp like a load of Indians and, and stay there overnight and you know that was done then I mean you'd never be able to see that in this day and age you wouldn't let your kids out and I've always had that uh, thing and when I started to struggle with a bit of mental health through lots of things that have happened in the military and family and different things um, 
a resource back to kind. And uh, th that thing that I really like is being amongst nature, whether it's fly fishing or shooting or with the dogs or riding the horse or wild camping, what you're referring to. Yeah, that's that's. Um, great. The, and the thing you're referring to is I went wild camping straight off the grid. And I've done this on numerous occasions. Um, but I'll just go on my own and I'll take the dogs with me and I'll take very little uh, equipment and I'll just take a bivy bag with a sleeping bag in um, and that's what I sleep in, there's no tent environment and you can throw it down anywhere and you can sleep anywhere and you, it, it, it is sort of like a very eerie uh, feeling because you, there's no one to talk to, there's no one to bounce off, you have to be happy and uh, engage your own self if you like you, you have to be really happy within yourself to be able to do that and I seem to find real comfort in that and if you speak to anyone who knows me I'm an extrovert I like being around people I really like you know I, I like enjoying other people's company and having a laugh and everything else but on the other flip side when I'm feeling it I like to just take myself off and just spend that time with myself and the dogs and walk and fly fish and just relax with really. I, I can understand the connection with nature. I, I can understand that. I mean, I, I, I like going off by myself so at, at times and you, you, you don't call me. I, I, I've got no problem with that at all. And sometimes I might sit down and have a cup, a cup of coffee somewhere and watch the world go by. But I think the distinction I'm making with you, it's interesting that you've gone back to your past uh, uh, as, as, a, as a way of understanding where, where you're coming from and perhaps your mindset, because uh, it reminds you of a point in time when you were, you, when you were joyful. But um, just sometimes when you're lying there in the night, and I suppose the two questions would be, do you have one restful sleep? Or B, are, are you aware of your surroundings? Or, um, <clears throat> On, on a day-to-day -day basis, I probably live on four hours sleep a day. I don't sleep very well at all. I go to bed late and I'm up early and I'm out. And like this morning, I was out at quarter past five and I went to bed at half past uh, uh, 12 last night. So I had very little sleep and, I, and I'm out and I can function on that. What I did find is, when I was um, out amongst amongst the madness of the, uh, of the adventure lifestyle, if you like. I slept incredibly well. Oh, right, that's interesting. Um, now, my job in, entails me being out all day. So I left the house at quarter past five this morning, and I'm still out now, and it's now uh, five past nine. Um, and and it, I, I'm 90% of the time, I'm outside mm. training, training with the dogs and doing stuff. Um, so being away while camping you wouldn't think it'd be much different but it is you're in a relaxed environment rather than working and um, what what I tend to do in those situations I walk a lot <clears throat> and currently I'm walking probably between 15 and 20 mile a day on a normal day and I might not even walk that when I'm when I'm out while camping and doing stuff like that but it settles me so when I come back and I climb into that baby bag to go to sleep, I'm, I'm moving with the daylight hours. And what I mean by that is because you're in the middle of nowhere, you have no technology, you're not interested in looking at it anyway, and you, you, you're walking all day and expelling energy and spending time with the dogs or maybe a bit of wild swimming and different sure. things. Yeah. You're tired, and if you, if you go to bed with the daylight hours, i.e. as it starts to darken mm. and night falls you go to bed and wake up when it goes gets light that's our natural body clock telling us that yeah, what we need absolutely. and i would be sleeping in those in that environment rather than sleeping three four maybe five hours a night i would be sleeping to eight and nine hours oh, right, okay. and having really restful sleep that being said I am a light sleeper, so if I hear something, I might wake up mm -hmm. and investigate it. Like, I told you the story about the badger. 
Well, go on, re- relay, relay that story. Uh, so 